Andrea. And I'm Michael. And we are with Be Love Go Academy at Jesus House Equipping Center. And we're going to be going through a class where we, where we will discuss human nature. What does God have to say about humanity? One of the reasons we're doing this class and this platform is because we are currently sourcing a brand new platform for Be Love Go Academy, which is a school that we have. And we're also working on the curriculum. But in the meantime, we wanted to make sure that we have materials and classes and just put content out there so that you can continue learning about who God is. Also, for those of you who follow me, because I'm sharing this to my page as well, I always have the question, what does God have to say about it? And this comes from that. Um, what does God have to say about it? We all know that the world is kind of chaotic right now. There's a lot of questions, a lot of you know evil, and, and a lot of people's faith are being stirred up. And when I go to God and ask him, what does he have to say? Not only does he answer me, but I also ask, what can I do to help bring the solution? And part of that is exactly why we're here, which is to bring the good news that God loves human beings. He created us in his image. But what in the world does that mean? And what does the Bible say about it? So that is why Mike is here, because he's really good at explaining things that I am not good at explaining. So I'm going to be asking him some questions um, about some curiosities that I've had and things that we've learned along the way so that you can understand why we say what we say when we say we're created in the image of God and we are not born with sin in us. And that's really where all of this came from. So I grew up being taught about original sin, that we, when we are born, we are born with sin. We have a sin nature. But the more I was learning about God and discovering about God and thinking about babies, I'm like, I don't believe that a baby has sin. I don't believe that if a baby dies, it doesn't go to heaven. So that caused me to explore. And thankfully, we had a lot of mentors and teachers that led us to the right place. So um, when we look in the Bible, there is nowhere that I was able to find that says that when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, that they that sin entered humanity. It doesn't say that sin entered our DNA. It doesn't say any of that. Um, what I do see in the scriptures is that it says sin entered the world, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's in Romans 5.12, and we're going to explore that a little bit more uh, when we discuss where the concept of original sin came from, but I just want to read it right now. Um, so Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So there what we see is that although, although death spread to men, like obviously we all die, it doesn't say that sin entered men. It says that sin entered the world. So that kind of gets you thinking. And then in Deuteronomy 1920, this was pretty cool um, because oftentimes I'm really, to me, free will and choice has become such an amazing gift that I see that God gave us and it really demonstrates his love in a powerful way. And if I'm being honest, I went through scripture because I wanted to know what does the scripture say about free will. And when you look at a concordance, you're going to look up words and stuff. And I couldn't find anything. So I had to rely on the Holy Spirit to show me. Um, and then just listening to different teachers and mentors and things like that, find where in the scripture we see that we have choice, where we have free will. And this is Deuteronomy 30, 19. 30, 19, yeah, where it says, and 20, 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. This is God speaking. But I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. For this is your life and length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. I wanted to read that because I like reading entire sentences. But the what I wanted to call out is that it said, God said, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. And then he says, so choose life. And the reason that stood out to me is because even in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, they had the ability to choose life over death. Although death came in, into man and sin entered the world they had the ability to choose life to choose blessing to choose good and i thought that was so powerful because a lot of times we think you know we really don't think through what we believe so i just wanted to point that out so Again, through our studies, we learn, we go, okay, what does God have to say about it? And then we learn about a particular, um, let's say, topic, you know, in this case, sin, where, you know, when does it enter man, I guess one can say. And the whole concept that sin entered humanity at birth, enters humanity at birth, really came it hasn't even it's not even that old of a of a teaching but it came from saint augustine mm -hmm. right so saint augustine i'm gonna speak very simply and then mike will elaborate but saint augustine believed that babies were born with sin and in sin mm -hmm. because he believed that sex the passion involved the passion and lust involved in sex even within the context of marriage was sinful therefore the act of sex would bring put the the fruit of sin in into the baby now back then it probably seemed like a great argument but in in today's world with in vitro are you saying that those who are born through in vitro don't have sin but those who were conceived through sex do like so we have to stop and ask ourselves in vitro, these questions is that like turkey baster Con yes okay it's a turkey right. baster <laughs> simplify right? for me so he just he he believed that sin was transferred through the act of sex into into a child. Um, he had a very distorted view of sex. So you know way more about Augustine than I do. So can you explain it? Because I think us understanding, one, where that belief came from or that doctrine came from is important. Yes. But also who brought it to the forefront? Because when we understand the filters that people have, you know, Augustine played a role in the church, an important one, but we have to understand the filters that they were seeing through so that we can look past it and build upon what they brought to yeah. us. And I, I didn't mean to dumb down the medical <laughs> profession there. Um, I, it was an amazing uh, discovery when they figured out how to do that. So um, an incredible medical breakthrough. But um, so yeah, Augustine, I would like to, talk a little bit about who Augustine was mm -hmm. so that people have an understanding of why this came, where it came yes. from. Um, I know you mentioned it wasn't that old. Well, I mean, it's pretty old. 354 AD is 350, 430 AD. Oh yeah, AD. so it is old, okay. It's very old, yeah. yeah. Um, going all the way back to, you know, 400 years after Christ. Um, and so Augustine- See, this is why you're here. You Augustine know that stuff I don't. came <laughs> along as a brilliant Christian leader who lived at a time in history when the Roman Empire was embracing Christianity and Christianity uh, was becoming a state religion it became you know everyone had to be a Christian at that time and Augustine was at the forefront and and was taking a, a prominent place so what Augustine said took uh, held a lot of weight with the Christians in the world at that time 
And we actually owe a lot to Augustine. Um, he was a brilliant Christian theologian. However, he wasn't perfect. And, and in this case, I believe he, he was, he was um, mistaken. And so Augustine believed that Adam's sin released a moral corruption so devastating that humans are born with no ability to resist sin. But on top of that, he also believed that that the babies themselves had a sin in their DNA, like what you had mentioned earlier. Um, at that time, um, Augustine was in a big debate with a guy named Plagasus um, around year 354 to 420 was when he was on the scene. And the two of them debated a lot. Um, and Plagasus taught that infants were born innocent and they grow and they develop the ability to choose good and evil and he had a huge following too they both had massive followings in fact it got to the point where the two sides of this debate rioted in the streets and were killing each other over the idea of is man born with sin or mm -hmm. without right it's kind of interesting there um they were extremely divisive but in uh in ad 417 the two councils of bishops in Palestine declared um, Plagueis his views as orthodox. However, the two opposing councils of the African bishops and all um, under the direction of Augustine, um, as well as Pope Innocent, um, he sided with Augustine. Augustine had an incredible amount of influence with the Catholic Church. What he said pretty much went. So the Pope went with Augustine. Therefore declaring Augustine's teachings as um, orthodox. So um, we had, so th there is a ongoing in the, mainly in the Eastern world, the Eastern Orthodox world, there is an ongoing understanding that babies are born innocent. That was not lost at that time. However, in the Catholic Church, because Augustine, the Catholic Church came out of Rome at that time and it flourished and grew, right and became the church so what the pope said went and so everybody kind of got on board with that so ultimately augustine won in in that battle um i don't know if you wanted to get into romans 512 or yeah so the only thing i want to add there because i had made a note is that so the catholics kind of sided with augustine in his argument of original sin yes and then the um, the line of Orthodox don't believe in original sin. They believe that we all experience the consequences of sin and death. Correct. And that's kind of the line where, where I'm at. I'm not going to say I agree completely with everything um, that the other side said. But f from that context, mm -hmm. that's what I believe. Also... Uh, to, and to be fair, um, Pope Gregory softened his view a couple hundred years later and said well you know they inherited adam's sin but not adam's guilt right they tried to split they, yeah and that's a whole other they watered it down a little bit yeah um which is better but still not accurate right so the one thing i wanted to know sorry i lost my track of thought so the one thing i wanted to note too um is that the jews do not believe in original sin. No. So I wanted to note that because, you know, when you think about God's design for humanity, what God thinks about humanity, we have to realize that humanity did not start when Jesus came. Humanity started before. So the fact that God's people since the beginning of time did not believe in original sin, I think that we need to take that into consideration when we're trying to understand what God thinks about this. Yes. So I just wanted to mention that. So yeah, so with Romans 12, one of the things that we did learn about that verse, which is the one that I read in the beginning about how sin entered the world, mm -hmm. at the time uh, of Augustine, there was the Latin Vulgate. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. So that Latin Vulgate was around back then. Yes, or a Latin translation. Right. So, yeah. So basically the Latin Vulgate was the Latin translation of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. 
And um, as we know today, like some of our translations aren't the best. I think each one offers something, mm -hmm. but the same thing with the Latin Vulgate. Yeah. There were some errors and discrepancies and sometimes language gets in the way. So why don't you share with us about that? I will, I will say that um, a lot of people, you know, get very upset about this concept of different translations and which one's right and wrong. And um, I will say all of our translations, nearly all, are far better yes. than what they had back and than the Latin Vulgate, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, and we have, um, obviously, going back to the original writings is the best, but then we have, um, while technology was lagging behind and we were trying to translate scripture into many different languages, we lost a lot of stuff. Right. And that's why nowadays with the technology we have, the archaeological research that we've done, the historical research and contextual research that the academics have done, uh, we've been able to create incredible translations of Scripture now. Right. Even though they're not all the same. More accurate. Far more accurate yes. than, than what Augustine was dealing with. And, and that's important to note that they are translations. So, you know, I know that we look at the Bible as the Word of God I tell you all the time, even when it comes to prophecy and things like that, to me, it has to be, my personal opinion is that it has to be founded on the scriptures. Um, but we have to recognize that our scriptures, what we read, is not the original. It is a translation, and we cannot guarantee, and no translation can guarantee that it's 100% accurate because you, of context and correct. idioms and things like that. And you that. could make the argument because of the time when Augustine was in the world that he would have had access to the original Greek. Um, however, he didn't use that mm -hmm. as his personal study. He used the Latin correct. translation as his personal study. And in the Latin translation in Romans 5.12, um, let's just read it here in NASB. I, I like this version because it's... Uh, New American Standard Version, because it has, in my my opinion, the best verb tense. Um, so therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. Okay? Um, so notice the phrase says, because all sinned. Mm -hmm. So this would lead us to believe that death spread to all of humanity mm -hmm. okay um, because each person sins right okay and it other verses talk about how all have sinned mm -hmm. at some point right and fallen short of the glory of God but Augustine's Latin translation did not say because all sinned mm -hmm. okay it says but rather it, and I can't pronounce it in the Latin here I have it written down here but I don't know Latin so I can't pronounce it um, but essentially, it, it says, in whom all have sin. Okay? So instead of because all sinned, it's saying, in whom all have sinned. So from this man, mistranslation of Romans, Augustine concluded that all of humanity was in Adam when he sinned. Right, okay? because it says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world... And death through sin, and so death spread to all men. So, do you have the full Latin translation of that? It's fairly, it's fairly, pretty close to the same. I know it's very slight so. Difference. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, in whom all have sinned, is the Latin translation. Okay. Okay. So it's basically saying we all sinned through Adam. In whom? In Adam. Yeah. We in sinned. Adam, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. what the Latin translation is mm -hmm. saying. But the, if you look at the proper translation, you go back to the original Greek, NASV has it correct here where it's saying because all have sinned. Right. Or all sinned. So it's so such there's a... an action. Right. There's an action that has to take place. We all sin at some point. We all fall short of the glory of God at some point. So isn't it crazy that such a small difference mm -hmm. provided Augustine 
the ability to justify his beliefs and thoughts on sex. Mm -hmm. Because that's really where it came from. St. Augustine did not, even, even within the context of marriage, he had issues with, with sex. Correct. So when you read that verse and it's pretty much saying, hey, we've all sinned in Adam, you could see where he got where he got there, right? Right. And then, you know, now we have the translations that we have and we understand it a little bit better. And to me, I see by saying that we all sinned in Adam really takes away something that I mentioned when we first started, which is free will. Because basically what it's saying is whether you want it to or not, you have sinned. Right. So the first time you sin in your life, or even when you sin as an adult, it doesn't matter because you are pretty much, can I say the word screwed? Because sure. you you already sinned even without sinning yourself. Right. Dr. Harold Everly writes um, that it first tells us that each and every person sins and hence sin and hence suffers the consequences yes. of sin that's what nasb version tells mm -hmm. us the other tells us the latin version which i don't blame augustine because if i was reading that in the bible yeah. I, I and and really believe the way he did already it would be an easy conclusion mm -hmm. to make well that's right? what it was saying so the second tells us that every human being suffers the consequences of sin simply because they exist right which is it makes no sense whatsoever especially when you combine it with image and likeness yes because yes. if we're made in the image and likeness of god we have to then deal with that and and find out are we still in the image and likeness of god or have we lost it and the other verse here in i believe it's Corinthians, um, I don't know if this was what on our list here, but if you pull up Corinthians uh, 11, 7. First Corinthians or second? Uh, first Corinthians 11, 7. Let me see if I can. And I just want to add that that was one of the questions I had as well. So in addition to babies being born with sin, it was, I just lost my train of thought. What? Image and glory of God. Yeah, so how can we be, how can we in the same breath say that we're all born in the image of God and that we have, we're born with sin? Because in essence, what you're saying is there is sin now right. in the image of God. And that was a question I had that caused me to look into this. Right. And so, also, if you look at, um, uh, well, you can look at Corinthians eleven seven. If you okay, have says, that, go ahead and read that. For a man ought not to have his head covered, since he is the image and glory of God. You can just stop but, there. Okay. So, man should not have his head covered because he is the image and glory of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we could keep reading, but then we'd have to teach on that second part and what that yeah, means. And, and we'll, we'll gather we'll, that later yeah, on. Yeah, we'll get but there. But it's what that verse is pointing out that man or humanity, actually, that word him, humanity, is in the image and glory of God. So notice that people are still, after the fall, because this is all the way up into the New Testament, a couple thousand years after the fall, and Paul, if he wrote Corinthians, which I believe he did, because um, he was definitely writing to the Corinthians. It was one of his churches. He said, he is, in man is in the image and the glory of God. So we're talking thousands of years later, he's still pointing this out, and he's talking about Jews and Gentiles being in the image and glory of God. So there's, even after the fall, it's very clear that we still carry that. Yeah, and I was just trying to look for the verse. I know I wrote it down in one of my notes, but it's not here. Somewhere in Genesis, in the first ch six chapters, God does say that anyone who kills another human being, mm -hmm. it's horrible because they're killing someone who is made in the image and likeness of God. Yes. So that's way after 
Adam and Eve. He said that way after Adam and Eve had sinned. So it's very clear that even after what we call the fall, right. God still considered man, every man who came after that, born in his image. So how could that be if there's sin? Yeah. So I think we're about, I don't know if we're at the 30 minute mark, but we're almost there. So we'll just take a pause here. Okay. Um, and then, so what's going to happen is we have um, this lesson, right? It's an introduction. We kind of talked about why we're here. Uh, we're going to be posting teachings every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, 30 minute teachings. We'll keep them short. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or you can email us at info at jesushouseus.com and we'll address them in the in one of the next upcoming videos. And the verse you just mentioned is Genesis 9, 6. Okay, so I was wrong. It wasn't in the first six. It was but in it's nine. Very, so it's well, way, well into... Yeah, whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man. Yes, beautiful. So there's that verse... It'll be on your screen as well so that you can reference it and look it up. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We will address them. If we don't address it in the next video, we'll address it in the one to come. And the reason we want to do that is because if you have a question or you have a thought, more than likely someone else does as well. So there are no silly questions because someone is pro probably has the same question as you. So just leave uh, your questions in the comments. You can contact us, you can message us. Um, and we will be interacting with the comments at some point. So you may receive an answer, um, but we can't promise that because one thing that we have learned is that sometimes a comment on Facebook is not the appropriate place to have discussions because a lengthier discussion, like a much bigger, and that's actually why we're here, because to discuss this on Facebook or even in one session, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot, yeah. because there's a lot of things that we've been taught throughout our Christian life, like right. both of us grew up in the church. We still haven't made the connection of how Augustine, how that belief got all the way to where we are today. Right, so. and... You know, like for me, speaking for me, you know, I was raised in the church. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of things. And obviously I learned Bible. It's not like I'm throwing everything out the window. But in rediscovering, not rediscovering, in discovering who God really is, right, I had to unlearn some things that were strongholds. So on your screen right now, what you are seeing are neurons in your brain. When a connection is made, when a thought is made, neurons connect. It's so cool when I learned this a few weeks ago. And that connection that you see, every time you have a thought. So let's say you, this thought right now that we are made in the image of God and we are not born with sin. When that connection is made, that thought is made, the neurons connect. And you can see that in the, the glowing part of the picture and the more you think on that and the stronger that thought and belief ha happens the stronger the hold is and that's actually a term used in science which is those are it, the more you think on something the stronger the hold is yes so hence to me that was like wow a stronghold and that's a lot of the deliverance that i had really wasn't demonic in nature it was strongholds strongholds are simply lies that we believe that keep us in a certain place there's bad strongholds and there's good strongholds because the lord is our stronghold as well he's our safe place so just you know for me one of the reasons we want to bring this is because we want to make sure that any lies that we have believed, any stronghold, any neurons in our brain that have been there, that have also transferred into the supernatural realm, into the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. and put str spiritual strongholds in our life, they keep us from truth. 
It keeps us from experience the, experiencing the abundant life that Jesus left us, joy, peace, everything that Jesus promised us. A lot of times we don't understand why we aren't, aren't experiencing it. And the simple truth is the reason we're not experiencing it is because there's lies that we believe. We believe about God, we believe about humanity, and we believe about ourselves. So this is our way of giving you some truths to combat those lies that and break down those like negative strongholds Amen. and build up the good strongholds where God becomes your stronghold and you know who he is so that you can live, have a better relationship with God. That's what this is about. Amen. The study of the nature of God, which is theology, the reason we're so passionate about it is because the more you know who God is, It'll improve your relationship with God. It'll improve your relationship with others. And it'll improve your relationship with yourself. And all of that equals a better quality of life for me and for you. And that's really what we want. It's yeah. the only way we can live the promises of Jesus. Amen. So in our next class, what we're going to start diving into are some of the scriptures that are used to um debate i guess mm. what we're saying so you know we do not believe that babies are born with sin we believe that in the sin sense is, that it's in their dna yeah with it yes. they may be born into a world with sin right. but they are not born with sin correct because if they are born with sin if they never get to accept jesus then poor babies if they happen to pass Yes. Before they can choose. So that's the line of thought that we have. And there are scriptures that have been used to subs to uh, justify the belief of what is called original sin. Yes. So we're going to discuss those. And that's why a Facebook comment isn't enough, right? We need to ha we need to really dive into this as a very big conversation. Eh, give it a shot anyways. I may, I may make a run at it. Well, you do make runs at it, um, but I just thought we'd offer this to really explain why we believe what we believe, why we teach what we teach. So we will see you on Thursday, and remember to send us any questions that you have. So see you then. Bye. God bless. Bye.